Please sit down. The court belongs to someone. The first question was how to cope with our individuality when it merges away into universality. Now, the very word cope make it a total contradiction of words between individuality and universality because it is such a subtle transition from one to the other, like uh, putting a ball of snow on the fire, it just melts away and vaporizes. <coughs> so, there is no coping that is necessary. It is a spontaneous thing which comes about because you have been prepared, you have prepared yourself for the emergence, it is understood. But do not be concerned with coping. If you are used to uh, eating bread and butter only, and if you are offered uh, a big feast, it is not a matter of coping with a big, a big feast. It's a matter of appreciating the big feast uh, very spontaneously. I know what is meant by coping here, that if you have a big feast with uh, three, four knives on one side and three, four forks on the other side, uh, and then you start thinking, those that are not used to the aristocratic way of life, who, which fork should I use first? and which knife shall I use first? But it's a very simple thing, really, because the knife and the fork that are to be used first are always on the outer side. Hmm? And then you can always, the other way, delay and, you know, just glance at someone, what he's doing or she's doing. So, the whole gist is this, that there is no coping required, because the individuality is not the individuality you are experiencing now. The individuality that you are experiencing now is centered in the small ego I that is so dense, clouded up. Hmm? And you are thinking from that clouded point of view that what would it be, how am I going to cope when I merge into universality? But with this clouded ego of the moment, you could never merge into universality. 